Hey learners, welcome back to Lauren Learns. I've got a Maserati coffee cup. Anyone else out there like this as much as we do? I think my husband and I go, well, it's an embarrassing amount, but we go through a lot. <laughs> yeah, 2019, crazy. I don't know how we got here, but I've been doing a lot of self-reflection. You know me. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about friendships this year and how I've really come to appreciate the grace over guilt in my friendships and I want to talk about that with you guys. Uh, friendships a weird thing. Like, you know when you're meeting new friends, it kind of feels like dating. I don't know if it's just a girl thing or if that applies to guys too, but a lot of times when you're like at the playground with other moms, and I'm speaking mostly for moms because I am one, but it's like, hey, do you like to do this like I do? And it just feels like you're on this weird blind date and then you exchange numbers and like you might talk to them again. You might not, <laughs> but I've had a lot of friendships start that way and kind of fizzle out and not go anywhere. And I always had a lot of guilt over that. Like, I'm supposed to be everybody's best friend and I want everyone to like me. And that's just not how life was meant to be. We were supposed to have our kind of chosen few friends that like are our blood friends that are confidants we can tell anything to. And um, I'm so blessed that I actually, I have those kinds of friends and then we're supposed to have the acquaintance types that we call friends, like more, more of our Facebook friends, mind you. And, and then you have people that you just know and you talk to whenever you see them. But so I truly believe that people are just like doing, we're just doing their, our best. Like we're just trying to live a good life. A lot of people are um, just being the best parents that they know how to be. And I think friendships are the same. I don't think people want to be crappy friends. I think we mostly try to be pretty good. Like we text, we call, we try to be intentional. At least I do, I'm, I, I can only speak for myself. But then there's these, these seasons where people get busy and you don't see people as often. And I would, I'd have like incredible guilt and I would feel like I wasn't measuring up to be the kind of friend that they needed and I would kind of just want to back out of their life. But so I would say I'm a recovering people pleaser. That's that's pretty accurate description of of me. I used to get like mommy playdate invitations. I'd say yes to all of them. I was letting my house suffer. I was letting time with my husband suffer. I was even really only going to play dates so I didn't have to be around my kids. It was easier to just talk to other moms because momming was so hard in the beginning, you guys, for me. It was like, it was easier to just drink coffee and talk to other mom friends while the kids played. I did this with people I didn't even really like and that's kind of sad because I missed out time with my kids. So since all of that, I've learned to really be intentional with the people I I know I can bless their life and they can bless mine and and it doesn't have to be about being an escape for my kids. So then I went to the opposite extreme and I started scheduling all my time. List out my responsibilities in my Google Calendar and I, I saw there was no time for friends. And I tend to be kind of an all or nothing kind of person. So um, I started cutting time for friendship out of my life. And I really had to see the hard way that that friendship's important and that we were meant for community and we were meant to li do life together. So it was during this time, you guys, and this is going to sound crazy to some of you and some of you it might not, but it was during this time that I found Jesus in a real way. And I grew up in church and I had done all the religious things, like, you know, all the Sunday church and the Wednesday night church and all of that. And, and I'd still not found him. And it was during this really, it was during this really quiet place that he found me. So Jesus became my new identity. I had identified with people for all of my life, pretty much. And they, and friendship was my identity. And it was so empty. It was, because people are people, right? Like people mess up, people let you down, people cancel on your plans. And then there you are left alone. Jesus, yeah, Jesus found me. It's the, it's the weirdest thing, but it was so real. And if you've never experienced it, but then you do, it's so real. And no one can take that experience away from you. So he he forgave me. He learned. He helped me learn how to forgive others. 
and give grace to others. And I don't think I would be where I am today, obviously, <laughs> um, and have learned all that I have without him showing me that grace first. I'm trying to be a less selfish friend and give more than I get. And that can be very hard. But the friends that I have now, you guys, like, they're, they're people that I know that if we go a long time without seeing each other, it's not a big deal. Like, we're not gonna break up. <laughs> we're, we're still gonna be, we're still gonna be besties. And we still communicate and text and all that, but it's, it's not like before where I had in that mommy play date period of seeing people all the time and I need to know everything about your life because my identity rests on this. And that was so not healthy, you guys. Like, my gosh. Friendship can be a tough area for people. If, if friendship's something that you struggle with because you have a hard time putting yourself out there, I say this year, you go out there and you tell people what you're all about and you show them how awesome you were made and you show them the talents that you have to share with the world and you make new friends. And if you have too many, like I did, because that's a real problem, because if you're spread too thin, you can't be good to people. If you have too many, start picking the ones that you know you're supposed to be intentional with so that you can be a good, hearty friend. People might get upset when you put boundaries on your time with them, but you can't, you can't help how people are going to react and your boundaries are important. All you have to do is put yourself out there. So until next time, go get messy, have fun, learn. I can't wait to talk to you again.